And welcome to Let's Fly VFR and Gunny's Flight School. I'm actually a qualified pilot, so I thought I would bring some of my experience to you and help you learn how to fly. I've flown lots of things, I've had lots of aircraft experience over the years, so let's uh, go out and learn how to take off and do a circuit. Let's get in the Cessna. Welcome to Let's Fly VFR. All in next plane 11. Props, jets, and much more. All done in real world weather. Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, welcome into the default Cessna 172. I'm going to sit in the right seat today, and uh, you can fly on the left hand side. So, Let's run through everything before we get going. Let's run through the instruments since this is the first time you've been in the aircraft with me. Over on the very left, we have our fuel quantities. So let's have a look at those. Let's zoom in and have a look. Okay, so we have plenty of fuel today for a short, short trip. Our engine gas temperature, that's our exhaust. And we just keep an eye on that. That will go up as we increase the throttle. Our fuel flows will also increase as we increase the throttle. We need to look at our temperatures, it's the engine temperatures and pressures to make sure they remain in the green at all times. We have vacuum. Now vacuum is really important because that powers some of our gauges. So if we were to get iced up, we would lose, we can lose the vacuum and we can lose some of our instruments. So it's very important to keep track of that and our amp meter. Here we have our speedo, if you like, if you're in a car, it's a speedo, but it's measured in knots. And there you notice that there's a number of colors on here. The white area initially gets down to about the point where the aircraft is liable to stall. Uh, this aircraft would stall somewhere around about that 40 odd knots. So it's quite slow. That's why it's such a fantastic training aircraft. The green area is the normal operating area, so we can operate from about 50 knots all the way through to 120, oh, 130 knots there. Now, you notice the changes from green to yellow, and this is certainly an area that you would not want to be in if you're in any rough air. And in fact, if we look at the pilot's operating handbook, it will give us a range of uh, speeds, known as V-speeds, that will tell us it's stall characteristics with and without flaps it'll tell us our normal cruise speeds our takeoff and rotation speeds our max speeds that we can fly the aircraft in uh, in unstable air because it put extra load on the wings we don't them falling off do we and then uh, our maximum speeds and things like that that's something we'll look at in the future at the moment if we just maintain it in the green we will be doing just fine moving across we have an artificial horizon here and this helps us and this is more important if we get into bad weather and we can't actually see the horizon really what you should be doing as a new pilot is looking out here and using this as a reference point this is the horizon and you'll find reference points as you go along probably in reference to this compass as well so it may be when you're trimmed and at level flight you might find that top of this or at a particular point here might sit just on the horizon so that's the sort of things you want to be looking at all the distance between the top of your cowling and the horizon all these reference points as you turn left and right uh, in the left seat when you turn left your point will be below the horizon yet when you turn right your vision point will actually be above the horizon so these sorts of things that you'll learn as time goes on down below here we have a compass. The compass we can adjust to make sure it matches with our magnetic compass. So these can drift a little bit as time goes on. So you can make adjustments here, backwards and forwards. So when we're lined up on the runway, we want to make sure that this lines up with the direction that we're pointing and we expect and make sure that this also lines up with the same figures. Now the other one here is, now this is for our direction or a heading bug. We can move this around as we like and we can use it for reference and every time we change direction 
we uh, it's a good thing to just move that so if we're flying along quite happily at uh, at 050 which is currently set at the moment and then we decide that we're going to fly at 090 which is east then we could move the bug across to 090 just as a good visual reference it's always a good thing just to move it there when you're doing the navigation uh, even with your takeoff so today the wind is actually running uh, from 060 at uh, 7 knots so what we'll do just as a reminder is we will leave the heading bug on the 050 because that's the direction our runway is heading so we know we need to go down in the direction we're turning that we're facing at the moment turn around and come back to take off here we have our altitude now there are a number of different ways you can set this this is set to zero so this is Q and H this is the zero at our own current airport so this is uh, it's sometimes used especially if you know you're not going anywhere but if you were going to be traveling anywhere uh, away from the airport then you would set it to the mean sea level or AMSL altitude mean sea level and on this airport that's 165 feet so you can just move that now that does change because air pressure continually changes around the earth so um, you might take off and it's set at one point and uh, if we were to go and check the radio and go and get a um, weather report which we can get on here we get one from Parafield Airport or the Air Force Base which is nearby because uh, Gawler where we are doesn't actually have a tower so I'm going to move this back for now just so you can see more easily what your altitude is as we fly around so a bit of this is our VSI or virtual vertical situation indicator and this shows us how fast we're going either up or we're going down and that's in one hundreds of feet we have our tachometer down here so we can see the engine is running quite comfortably and our operating range is between 2000 and just about 3000 rpm 2850 is normally a, a, a nice place to be we have our GPS is here which we're not going to talk about today other than we can change our temp our frequencies here you can see the frequency com1 com2 and our navigation frequencies again not something we need to worry about today we're going to stay in the circuit another part of our navigation at the moment we can leave that alone and down here we also have a transponder transponders are used so people know who and where you are in VFR flying, you need to be at 1200, 1200. If you were getting navigation from a tower or a controller, they would give you a unique number to put in here and they, that way they can track you as you fly around and know where you are at all times. Now, if we look a little bit further down, let's look down, we have some more controls. So I'll go through those quickly for you as well. So we have our on and off key, we have our main power, we have our avionics switch. If we turn this off, we will lose all our avionics. And that just leaves us back with what everyone calls steam gauges. We don't need these today anyway, but I'll leave them on because, well, they look pretty, don't they? We've got a number of switches here that are important. We've got lights here. We've got pedo heat, which we really don't need today, so I think I'll leave that off. And uh, if you're not sure, you can check up here to see what our uh, outside air temperature is because it's on the gauge here it's currently nine degrees Adelaide is actually quite cool today but in our flying around that's not liable to get anywhere near close to uh, needing it and here we have a fuel pump fuel pumps are used when we're uh, taking off and climbing and when we're descending but once we're at altitude we tend to turn them off because they're also noisy little festers as well they tend to make a rattling noise behind you here we have the handbrake we have the trim wheel, so if we push the trim wheel up, that'll push our nose down, and we generally need that on high power settings if we want to remain steady. And we bring it down if we want to climb throttle. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Uh, we have throttle and mixture. Uh, this comes into play once we get some altitude. 
we can pull this out to lean the mixture, otherwise it will run rich, and like any car that's running rich, you'll have to smoke out the back in poor performance. Down here we have our flaps, and we can move these down a number of sections until they're fully down and or fully up. And you can see the indicator. You always check physically where they are because you can see them, and then you check the indicator to make sure that's right. Okay, so since you're in control today, let's just ensure that our altimeter is set correctly. Let's take that back. I'll just do that for you. And we'll set it at QNH, which is the airport. So the airport altitude, the airport altitude is 165 feet above sea level. But we will do a circuit at 1,000 feet. So the little hand will be at the one. Hopefully it will remain there while you're doing the circuit. So let's check our instruments. Let's have our pump on. We will turn the, uh, the pedo on anyway. It's always a good thing. And uh, everything else is set to go. So what I'd like you to do is to just check your brakes. And you can see that the handbrake has now come off. And just uh, add a little bit of power. Now this does have nose wheel steering. So as you turn and push your rudders, it will turn the stone nose wheel steering for you. And we just taxi slowly, just take it gently as you're going out. As you move across different surfaces, you may or may not need more power to, uh, to get across. Some things have more resistance, there's a bit more resistance just here. So just add a bit of power and as you come out of that, just be ready. see how it just releases so left on the brakes there on the rudder there so this is tied to your rudders as well so as you get a little bit of wind we have wind coming from essentially behind us over our left shoulder today from 060 it's nearly a head on so what you would do is you would have a little bit of have your stick forward or the yoke forward so the wind blows the tail downwards and doesn't try and lift it up not so crucial at six or seven knots, but if you had 20 or 30 knots, we would certainly have an issue with that. So we'll stop at the line here. We will look left. We'll look around the circuit and we'll look right, all looking nice and clear. And we'll just taxi forward now. Just a little power. Now we're going to cross over the main runway here. This is runway 31 and 13. And there's a taxiway just over to the left over there. Can you see that? So let's taxi a little bit to the left. You need a little bit more power on the dirt runway. Plenty of uh, gliders around today. If you ever come out to gliding, you can come out gliding here at, uh, at Gawler. They have training days, um, Saturdays and Wednesdays. Although, if you have a license, you can come out and sign an aircraft out anytime, which is uh, one of the joys I have been able to do that. You can just book online, call the, call the Flying Club as its own online booking system. They have a number of aircraft that you can uh, book out. So, just make sure you're, you're back before the next booking is required. So, you can see the uh, windsock there. If that is straight, you know it's at least 10 knots. So it's hanging limply at about halfway, so it's you know, it's five to eight knots probably at the moment. And you can see its direction. There are two of those on our run on our airport, and you can check those. There's another one over to the right, which is a little hard to see, but there is another one over there to the right there near that tractor you can see cutting the grass. Bit left on the rudder, a little bit more power. Maybe we're a little bit off the runway, so it's just giving us that little bit of extra friction. Not too far away. Now we're going to stop here again. You always stop at these lines before we enter. You're going to put the park brake on, so we'll just get rid of that. You can put the park brake on. There you go. Now what we need to do now is we need to check. Our instrumentation is all correct. Um, you can see that everything is in the green, in the green, green. Everything here is all as it should be. We shouldn't be moving up or down. 
and uh, we'll talk about this later but this also is your turn slip so they talk about keeping the ball in the center this is really controlled by your rudders if it goes to the left then you push left if it goes to the right you need to push a little right and try and maintain it there that'll stop your passengers and me getting sick next to you while you're flying around things become unbalanced it's like being in a car and reading a book you, uh, you can you can get your ear inner ear upset and it doesn't know uh, which way is up and then you start to feel unwell so what we need to do now is I would like you to push the throttle up until you get to about 1700 rpm and we're going to turn the magnetos off one at a time to make sure that they are operating what you should get is a small about 500 rpm drop in rpm so let's get it up to about 1700 zoom in a little there we go 1700 and you can just use your mouse to click it back one see how it drops off click it back up and then next time we go move over and click it two so that's a left and a right and we're back into start again and that's all we need to do so we know our twin magnetos are working now if we open up over here now if you don't know who this man is maybe you need to go back to episode six just joking just joking okay all right let's um are you ready Taxi out and turn left. Brakes just take a quick look right ahead of us and down. Remember that there are gliders flying around here and other light aircraft, so be aware. Keep your eyes outside the cockpit. So just using your rudders, a little bit of left and right power back. Don't get too excited on the on the power. You should only be taxiing around about walking pace. We're just taxiing out now. These are the runways or the tax the takeoff strips. The reason we have these is to protect the wooden propellers on the Jabaroos. But uh, we have a, a metal prop here on the on the uh, Cessna, so it's not quite so bad. So we'll come out here and just turn around to the left again. Use the power you need. Full left on the rudders, fine and back off the power as you come back onto the right taxiway onto the runway okay there we go okay line up straight brakes and we're ready to go so just hold the brakes now let's check everything you can see okay let's get ourselves on the move so adding power trying to keep it straight and on the takeoff strip Coming up to full power. There's been a little bit of water around, hence all the spray, but don't worry about that. We've got good speed. We're tracking very well. And back on the yoke, and away we go. And we've just taken off. Let's continue the circuit. See that there is just a little bit of a headwind coming in, because you can see it's already indicating. It's not straight up and down at zero. And that is the same. Look over to the right, and you can see the the windsock over there okay check left make sure there's nothing else taking off and you've always got to be careful of the gliders and things on the lefty so it feels good in the green in the green in the green not moving yet but level 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 and zero five and we would have how we looking here like zero five over there too now there's a little bit of parallax error uh, zero zero idling and everything else is good flaps we only leave the flaps up we don't require flaps to take off but we will use flaps to land okay now what I'd like you to do is just apply the power gently and smoothly up to full power and the aircraft will try and talk to the right and um, it'll try to weather vane to the right because the winds there but the torque will also probably try and push it to the left so just be ready for that and just be gentle now heels on the floor we don't want you applying the brakes okay ready all clear radio call Cessna 172 SP rolling on runway 05 Gawler now I'll manage those for you as we go around the circuit ready and when you're ready power up still 
going good starting to go a little left there just a little bit on the rudders up a bit more be comfortable with it okay there we go just a little left be gentle keep it straight look down the runway look down for speed 55 knots 60 rotate just ease back and there you go you're flying let's maintain about 75 knots and try and maintain the heading keep an eye on your little heading bug but look outside let's have a look over to the township okay maintain that and we'll continue to climb at that speed now we reference speeds not attitudes we happen at particular attitude will give us a particular speed up or down now we're 500 feet we'll check left and then we'll roll left and we're looking for 1,000 feet above the ground you can see our little bug we just roll out just prior to it getting there if you roll out about 10 degrees before you'll be fine now we want to check to the right and see if there's any aircraft coming in from the training area which is out to the right there. Anything in the pattern, all looking good, coming up to a thousand feet and the radio call, call the traffic, Cessna 172 SP turning left downwind for runway zero, for runway zero five. So let's bring the power back a little bit themselves plenty of time and roll that just before the little heading bug gets to the bottom level okay you can see if you let go it wants to climb so grab the trim and just push it forward a little until it stops doing that okay should, should nearly be able to fly it hands off this is just gently climbing just a little bit on there now well, let's do our pre-landing checks, check where we are. Okay, we need to do it fairly quickly now. So it's going to be check our brakes, check our fuel quantities, our harnesses, our hatches and heat are all closed, doors closed. Bring the power back a little bit. And anything under 100 knots is actually okay. Or four stage of flap. First stage of flap going down for you. Just trim it down, nose down, because as you get more lift it won't go up, but you will get more drag. You can see the speeds coming back. But that's fine because we'll look left. And we're in a good spot there. Let's turn left on our base leg. And a 500 foot descent rate or so is about nice. Now if you're going a little bit too fast, lift the nose up. Our attitude controls our speed and power will control our descent rate. Okay, rolling out, you can just trim it nose back a little bit just, and bring the power back and let's just check where we are in relation to the strip, it's over to the left there, let's see how quickly we get away, okay check, we've got about 70 knots there, that's good, let's turn base, turn final I should say. Call the traffic, Cessna 172, turning final for runway 05, Gawler. So we rotate around, and we can see it over there, we're a fair way away, so let's just move our way across until we line up. It's a bit of a haze there today. Okay, it's just coming up to the our windscreen there, the edge there, and it's opposite that uh, racetrack. So keep the trim, keep the speed. Can you see it okay? Okay, we've got one stage of flaps. We're now lined up. And we'll make this a full stop landing and then run back into the hangars. And that'll do for your first circuit of Gawler, or Adelaide Soaring Club. Now, as we fly in, we let's... Uh, just maintain where we are at the moment before we add the second stage of flap. You can see we're at 300 feet and I'm, we're just maintaining that as we come in. Now we're going to head down. I don't want you to fixate on the runway. As you get close to the ground, I want you to move your view to the far end of the runway and we'll try and reference the cowling to the horizon as you come in. Okay, we're at 60 knots. It's a little on the slow side. Okay, 
we're weather vaning a little bit to the right because that's where the wind's coming from so a little rudder okay so as we turn in on base you can see the flaps are down we're going to line ourselves up with the runway maintaining our speed and maintaining our pitch so remember pitch is speed power is descent rate something very crucial for you to remember so as we come in over the top duck your head and a little flare just watch the nose come up as you're, as you're looking down there and then nose on the runway just to straighten us up as we come in a little bit more rudder and ready and now look at the far end and then hold that nose just up a little and power off there we go and you've made your first landing let's get the brakes on well done and we're even back before the first joint so we'll tuck away the fl the flaps everything else is good let's just power away taxi over to the right I'll do that for you if you like you can just relax not too much on the power and we'll turn left and turn right in here and if you do happen to like this uh, airport you're more than welcome just to message me and I will give it to you because this is built by me all the hangers and everything uh, come from a number of libraries but uh, it's pretty representative of the real airport if you would like to see the real airport um, if you look through the playlists you'll find one where I did uh, a tour of the Jabiru 170s just recently so feel free to do that and uh, our final radio call Call the traffic, Jabber, uh, Jabber, Cessna 172SB, clear of all runways. That lets everybody else know. And which is using the CTAF frequency, 125, uh, 122.5. Okay, all back. So let's just quickly check everything. We'll put our park brake on for a moment. And we do need to do one final check of the electrical system, and that's by not putting the power up as we did previously but bring it back it just dies away a little back up back to so we turn the other magneto off what we want to know is it hasn't failed while we've been flying that's all good so let's put it back up there and let's turn our masters off don't need them anymore turn the pumps off the strobes will turn our pump off and everything else is back what needs to be and what we'll do I prefer just to turn off the mixture which we didn't do, use today we turn that off turn everything off here we can uh, if you're ready just grab the handle and feel free to jump out Let's make it as real as possible every fly. Subscribe, like and leave me a comment. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, I hope you gained a great deal out of that quick circuit. There's a lot, lot, lot more to learn. So if you're uh, new here, please, and you like what you've seen, feel free to hit that subscribe button for me. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. This will be a weekly series for a little while. Every Wednesday, we'll look at a new facet or a new part of flying real world aircraft inside X-Plane 11. So I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to catch you here again next week. See you again soon at Let's Fly VFR.